Hello everyone. This video will be useful for those who are looking to start their DevOps journey. In this video, I'll cover what is DevOps, how is DevOps different for the different profiles, and lastly, what are the different tools and technologies you should learn to become a DevOps engineer. So let's start with what is DevOps. DevOps is a practice that combines the software development with the operations, which reduces the software development lifecycle and make it more efficient. So now if I'll explain in the layman terms, previously what used to happen in the organization that if you're deploying a web application, first the infrastructure team will deploy the infrastructure or create the infrastructure like the servers, networking and the security. Then the developers will start writing the code for the web application. And once the code is ready, then the application administration team will make those servers ready or the operating system, like whether it's Windows or Linux, they will make those operating system ready so that the code which is created by the developers can run and make it as a web server. All these teams used to work in silos, which takes a lot of time and effort. So if there is an enhancement or if there is a new feature update, then all the different teams have to do the task separately, which made it more complex and increase the duration of software development lifecycle. So then the DevOps was introduced and DevOps is combination of dev and operations. Now the expectation is that a single person who is a DevOps engineer should know the programming language, how it will be deployed, the application, how it will be configured and the infrastructure. But this is an ideal scenario. However, in the real world, this doesn't happen. So the DevOps is also divided among two profiles. So one is DevOps for the developers and another one is DevOps for the engineers, or you can call it as DevOps engineer. And with the introduction of the DevOps, the middle layer, which was the application administration that is completely gone. Now the developer, they should know how to create the code and deploy it by using the continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline. And for the engineers who used to just manage the infrastructure now should know how to build the code, test it and deploy it into the servers. And the configuration of the servers have to be managed by the DevOps engineer. I have more than 14 years of experience in IT and based on my experience, how the DevOps works in the organization is if the organization is very small, they don't have the infrastructure team or one or two persons in the infrastructure team, then the developers who are creating the application for their own project are the one who will write the code create the pipeline and deploy it into the cloud or the on-prem servers. So this is the case for the small organization. However, if there are bigger organization, then the developers should know all those things, but their role will be just to write the code, but they have to modernize their code because now the web applications are deployed in the cloud and they need to modernize it according to that. And in that case, there will be a DevOps engineer team or a DevOps team who will take care of the pipeline, who will take care of the deployment, security and everything. So first you need to decide which side you are on. And then based on that, I'll show you what are the different tools and technologies you should learn. If you are a developer and you want to use the DevOps, then first thing will be learning the programming language. Of course, you will be learning any specific language here. I've just shown the Java .NET, but there are multiple languages like Python, PHP, because you are a developer, this is normal for you. This is what you should be learning. You, you have been writing this code from a long time. So first thing is programming language that is done. So now you know how to write code. The another one is how will you store your code? If by mistake, someone deletes the code or if you have made some changes or enhancement, but they have gone south, something is wrong. So in that case, what can you do? You need a version control. So in case of any issue, you can revert back those changes. So different version controls are Azure Git, which is Azure DevOps repository, AWS code commit, code build, as well as the GitHub, GitLab. So there are multiple tools. So my recommendation is pick one because in the backend, they're using the Git commands. So now you know about your programming language, you know how to version control it in the GitHub. So you have learned GitHub. So the next step is because you need continuous integration, continuous deployment. So you need to build the code which you have written. So there are different tools like Maven, Gradle, and depends on the programming language, you need to use the tools. 
because if you will be creating these pipelines in the cloud, there are different ways how you can use these tools. These tools will work differently when, when installed in an, these tools will work differently when installed in a virtual machine and they will work differently when they will be used as a pass service. So the DevOps who is a developer should know all these tools or should know how to build using the cloud pipeline or the pipeline which is running in the server. Then comes the testing tool because you cannot deploy the code directly into production before testing it. So there are multiple testing tools like Selenium, it's on automation testing, JUnit. There are a lot of different tools, but pick one, choose one tool and become good in it or understand it so that when you want to integrate it, you can integrate it easily with your CI CD pipeline. Now cloud is the center of everything. Whether you're a developer, infrastructure engineer, database administrator, you should know cloud because now mostly all the organization, either they are hybrid or they are completely into cloud. So pick one cloud, either it's AWS, Azure, GCP, or there are multiple other cloud vendors, but these are the famous ones. So once you have picked the cloud, now you should know the different scripting language because it's not that you will always use the portal to deploy in the cloud because you may need to use the CLI. And in that case, you need to decide whether you want to learn PowerShell, Bash or any other scripting language. And all these technologies and tools are interconnected. My recommendation is if you are choosing the Azure cloud, then use PowerShell because Azure cloud integrates well with PowerShell. If you're using AWS, then the CLI runs on Bash also. So you can use the Bash because it will be very useful for you to learn that specific skill which integrates well with the whole pipeline. So the next is the pipeline. Now you have to deploy the continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. There are multiple which are available like Jenkins, GitLab, Azure DevOps, AWS code commit. So these are the different pipelines. It's not that you need to learn everything, just you need to learn one and become good in it. So if you have chosen the Azure cloud, then I would recommend use the Azure DevOps pipeline. And once you'll become good in it, and depends on the different projects you are working, then you can learn Jenkins or the GitLab. But first you need to learn one technology. Let's focus on Azure DevOps. So now you have deployed the pipeline, you have deployed the infrastructure in cloud, script in everything, then comes the monitoring. So let's take an example. If you are deploying a .NET application, you have, you have written the code, it's in GitHub, saved in GitHub. There are different build tools, testing tool you have done. Now you are deploying in Azure app services, which is a web app where you can create a web app and you have PowerShell, you have deployed Azure app services. You have created the Azure DevOps pipeline. Everything is working. Now you need to know, understand because you are the one who created the Azure app service. Now you should know how to monitor your application. There are different web monitors or the monitoring of the underlying infrastructure. All these are really important for an application to run in a healthy state. So there are different monitoring tools like Splunk, Azure Monitor, Prometheus, and depends on the different application which you are using for your project or for your organization, you need to learn those. Right now, if you are just starting your career, in that case, just pick one. Everything works similar. If you learn one, it will be very easy in case in case you join an organization, then it will be very easy for you to pick up the another technology which is similar to that. So the monitoring part is done. And finally, because now everyone is deploying in the containers. So the containerization, there are multiple different services which are available like Azure EKS, which is uh, Azure Kubernetes cluster, Amazon Kubernetes cluster, which is AWS. AWS ECS is a managed service. You need to just deploy the containers and everything will be managed by AWS, but different monitoring, how to resize, how to scale, all these things you should be aware about, but it's not that you need to learn everything in detail. The things on the left side, which is programming language, version control, build tools, testing tools, you should be pro in it. However, on the right side, it's better to learn these technologies or the tools so that you can create your application based on that. So as I've explained previously also, if you are a developer in the bigger organization, there will be a DevOps team. However, in the smaller organization, 
you will be the one managing the whole software development life cycle. So now if I'll go to the DevOps engineer, their first thing is you should know your cloud. Pick anyone, Azure, AWS, GCP or any other one, but you should know cloud because for a system engineer, for a DevOps engineer, for an infrastructure engineer, SRE, cloud is must. So pick one cloud. Now, how will you deploy the resources? Yes, there is a way you can deploy using the portal, but it doesn't work always. So you need to learn the scripting. You need to learn infrastructure as a code so you can mass or bulk deploy your infrastructure. So there is a requirement that 50 servers have to be deployed. So you can't deploy 50 servers from the portal. It will take ages. However, if you use infrastructure as a code, first, all the servers will be identical. There will be no human error and then they will be deployed efficiently and very quickly. So infrastructure as a code uh, depends on the cloud which you are choosing. If it's AWS, then AWS cloud formation. If it's Azure, then Azure ARM template. And there is a Terraform which works on both. But if you're new to infrastructure as a code, I would recommend learning the one which is your cloud specific because smaller or medium organization, they don't trust the third party tools so easily because then they have to deploy the licenses and manage the infrastructure for the third party application. However, if it's a part of the cloud service, managed service, then it will be managed by the cloud. Now you have learned infrastructure as a code. You need to learn scripting also. PowerShell bash depends on which cloud or depends on the requirement. You should learn at least one scripting language. Now you have deployed the infrastructure. You know the scripting language infrastructure as a code. The one important thing is containerization. Now, most of the organization, they are deploying the application in the containers because they are more efficient and scale quickly. And there are a lot of benefits of using the containers as compared to the virtual machines. So now the technology shift is pushing towards containerization. So it's recommended to learn the technology which is specific to your cloud, the which you have learned. So if it's EKS, AKS, EKS is Elastic Kubernetes Service, which is of Amazon. AKS is Azure Kubernetes service, which belongs to Azure. And there are different services like AWS ECS, which is Elastic Container Service or Azure ECS, where you can deploy the containers without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. Now, this is what extra you need to learn to become a DevOps engineer from an infrastructure engineer. The technologies on the left side are mostly learned by infrastructure team. However, now you need to learn the version control. GitLab, GitHub, or cloud specific repositories. So you need to understand how the version control will happen, how the role based access control and all these things will be taken care. Now you know about the version control. Then the next step is how to integrate that version control or GitHub with your pipeline so that a code when saved in the repository should be continuously integrated and deployed into the cloud. So a pipeline CI CD pipeline needs to be created. There are multiple options of the pipeline, which is code deploy, Azure DevOps, CI CD pipeline, GitHub actions or GitLab. So pick one, but my recommendation is the one specific to your cloud. Use that one. And now you have created the infrastructure, but now how will you make the infrastructure ready so that the code will run into your virtual machines or your managed services? For that you need the configuration management and this was the task of the application administration team which is completely gone now. So in the configuration management there are different tools. These are Ansible, Puppet, SaltStack. For example, you are deploying SAP. So you have deployed the SUSE or the Windows server or the Oracle servers. Now you need to make the operating system changes, how much the cache it should be, how many disks and all these changes into the operating system will be taken care by configuration management tools. So once the configuration of the server, everything is done, then you can run your application. Then you will just deploy the code and automatically your web application or a specific application will start running. And finally, now you have everything deployed. So another important step is to make sure that things are always running, which is monitoring the different monitoring for the different technology like Azure monitor or monitor the different services in the Azure as well as on-prem. Amazon has its own CloudWatch. 
Then you can use the Splunk for the logging or Prometheus or Grafana if you're using Kubernetes. So based on the technology which you're using, based on the tools which you're using, you can choose your monitoring. As a starter, I would say pick one based on the cloud. So if you're using the Azure cloud, so pick Azure Monitor. It integrates with almost all the Azure services and provides an option to integrate with the third party applications also. And the final one is the security. Being a DevOps engineer, you have deployed the application, but they should be done securely. And you will be taking care of the cloud security, the resources which you have deployed, the pipeline security because you have deployed a pipeline, how the pipeline is working, there is no password sharing in the pipeline or no secrets being shown in the pipeline. Then in the version control, then you need to take care of the security of the version control. If the developer team, are they sharing the sensitive data into the Git repository? Is your Git repository public or private? So all these security measures have to be taken care by DevOps engineer. If I'll summarize this, normally a DevOps engineer is an extension of infrastructure engineer or a system admin, you can call it as, who will know end-to-end -end resources, just not the programming language. But if you are good in programming language, that will be an added benefit for you. But in the case of the developers, now the expectation has changed. They need to understand the cloud. They need to understand the pipelines because smaller organization, they can't have multiple resources for a small application. So they want their developers to deploy the applications too and manage the different life cycles of it. So whichever category you are in, whether you're a developer or a system engineer, make a plan first, choose a single technology and then start learning it. Instead of learning the multiple technologies of the same type, choose different ones and just try to complete the whole process. Someone saving the code into the repository, then how the pipeline will integrate, how it will be deployed into the cloud and managing the monitoring and the security. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.